Welcome to another meeting of the Lorain County Commissioners broadcast exclusively on your Lorain County Community College Education Station. The Lorain County Commissioners cordially invite you to see the meetings live and in person every Thursday morning. The meetings are located in the Lorain County Administration Building located at 226 Middle Avenue in downtown Elyria. The meetings start at 9.30 a.m. on most weeks. Now, enjoy the meeting. Okay, if we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I know I'm set. adjusting this chair. Isn't that fun? That's the best part. Okay. Thank you all for attending. Uh, today's uh, statement is, it is not the same to talk of bulls as to be in the bull ring. So I think that applies to politics. <laughs> okay. What? Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, under resolutions, I need a motion to approve the job and family bills for payment. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Investments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. There are no advances today. Right. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Bassey? I, I have an exception. 532. And we did take a vote, I'm sorry. We, we did? Yes. All right. Then let's move on to okay. item number Travel two. expenses? Also so moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Approving bills for payment? Uh, so moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. We need to authorize various personal actions as indicated on the summary for employees within the jurisdiction of the Lorraine County Commissioners. So moved. I think, I think we need an executive session, I was told today. That's fine. Right, we'll be requesting executive session for the specific purposes of talking uh, potential new hires, uh, possible disciplinary issue, and I also believe the prosecutor has a matter of litigation. I'll withdraw my That's motion. Correct. Okay. I'd authorize the return of funds to the Ohio Lake Erie Commission in the amount of $17,751.25 for the expenses associated with the Lorain County Model, excuse me, model Zoning and Community uh, Guide Project. This project was an Ohio Lake Erie Commission grant. The project was completed in January 2002, and on February 14, 2002, the Ohio Lake Erie Commission approved the final report and closed the grant file, subject to the return of unspent funds. I need to authorize the president to execute all documents on behalf of the board. I'll so move. No second. Discussion? I, Ron, one real quick question. Will we be getting a copy of this report? Ron Twining, Community Development Director, TWINING. Um, I have forwarded a copy of both of the uh, reports, the Carlisle plan, which was really intended to be to Carlisle themselves. We can make photocopies if you want, but I've given a copy of that and the community guide to the county administrator so that the uh, commissioners have that on file. We have a copy over in ours. Anything beyond that, we would have to photocopy. If the commissioners wish, I can make photocopies available to them. We do have a copy in the office, though. Yes. Okay. I, I'll just look at ours. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Blair. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mrs. Vassey. Aye. I'd like to award the following bids for various highway materials for the county engineer's department for the asphalt plant mixes to CNS Limestone of Columbia Station, Ohio in the amount of $175,500. The engineer's estimate of cost was $185,000. For asphalt emulsion to Crossroads Asphalt Recycling of Columbia Station, Ohio, 
in the amount of $194,000. The engineer's estimate was $290,000. And for limestone aggregate, to CNS limestone in the amount of $123,150. The engineer's estimate of cost was $125,000. This was the only bid received. The above awards are the lowest and most responsive bids received complying with specifications, and funds are available in the motor, motor vehicle gas tax uh, materials account. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. <coughs> I'd like to approve and enter into subdividers agreement between the Board of Commissioners and Scott Dillon, developer, Ravine's Edge Subdivision No. 1, Carlisle <coughs> Township. Developer has deposited $323,723.13 in escrow to be held by Chicago Title Company for this project. Liability insurance and escrow agreement are also attached, and the county engineer has reviewed and recommends approval. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. I'd like to approve and enter into the following lease agreement between the Board of Commissioners and A, the Lorain County Child Support Enforcement Agency for offices located at 42485 North Ridge Road, Elyria, Ohio. Leases for a period of 12 months, effective retroactive to November 1, 2001, ending October 31, 2002. The rental amount for 2002 is $111,703, or that would equal uh, $9,308.58 monthly, and that is at $6.82 per square foot and B with the Lorraine County Department of Job and Family Services for offices also located at 42485 North Ridge Road, Elyria, Ohio. Leases for a period of 12 months, effective retroactive to November 1st, 2001, ending October 31st, 2002. The rental amount for 2002 was $403,638, which equals $33,636.50 monthly. That equals up to $6.78 per square foot. Both of the above agreements do contain a written cancellation clause. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. I'd like to accept the quote submitted by Murray Ridge Production Center Incorporated of Elyria, Ohio, to clean the employment and training network offices on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at $56 per day. Tile floors will be buffed monthly, stripped wax annually. Interior glass to be spot cleaned weekly, fully cleaned monthly. Exterior windows will be cleaned on a quarterly basis, along with a normal cleaning, uh, example, vacuuming of carpets, trash removal, mopping of floors, etc. The cost does not include cleaning supplies and equipment. Also, Lou, I think it's an excellent idea. I agree. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. I'd like to accept <laughs> proposal submitted by... Sorry, I was pointing out to Commissioner Blair that some time ago, uh, and she probably forgot that she asked me to look into trying to have the county participate in that program. And uh, it took a little while, but we did find an area where we could participate with, with our friends out at MRDD. And I was pointing yeah, out to her that it was her idea. idea. It was just <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'd like to accept proposals submitted by Janine Donaldson of the YWCA Special Project Manager to enter into lease agreement with the YWCA for a period of three years with an option for new for an additional two years. The lease will provide the county with 39 parking spaces at a cost of $15 per space a month for a total monthly payment of $585. This agreement allows the county to have exclusive use of the lot Monday through Friday until 5 p.m. Do we have an opt-out clause in here? <clears throat> we have all kinds of clauses. Uh, the prosecutor's uh, office has uh, done a tremendous job making sure the county is, is covered. This. I, I'd like to ask at this juncture that uh, we we uh, hold on this. I'm, I'm going to have to uh, discuss with the board some issues pending on parking. Uh, and I was going to do that under my report. Maybe we can address these all at the same time. That would be acceptable to the board. Okay, and make sure there's a clause in there, the 30-day option to op opt out if we have to. Jerry, you, uh, did you review that? Uh... We have a draft of the agreement. That's what you want to put in, and I'll put a clause like yeah, that. I don't it think, may, may I don't think the draft currently. Oh, we're doing. Karen right. just left. I don't think it currently is in there. But uh, I thought we're just voting on whether or not to accept the proposal. Then we still got to work out the agreement, don't we? Exactly. Well, then why wait? That's fine. Whatever the pleasure to board no, is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have 
some dialogue with, with the board concerning the parking issue, but we can go ahead and uh, that proposal is an integral part of that dialogue. So if you want to vote well, on would that, would your dialogue wonderful. affect this? I mean, do you did you find parking somewhere else and we may not need this? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, I, this, is, this is definitely needed, so uh, maybe I, I should just have my discussion under my uh, time period, but uh, I do need this, too. All right, because I talked, I talked with Ken Carney, the engineer, yesterday, I believe it was, and we have land out there on Hathaway, and he mentioned that that land could be available for construction, for the contractors to park out there or the employees and shuttle them back and forth. And there, there's a lot of land out there that we could use. It, and that's where the park and ride is. So, I mean, that's another option that we, you're probably exploring it. I don't know for sure. Well, I. It's kind of for each one of you. I'm sorry. Oh, you, okay. you need the, this in addition to that. That what I heard you say. Yes. Okay, I'll second Commissioner Moore's motion to approve this, uh, or accept this proposal. Any more discussion? Um, if I might. You indicated a 30-day opt-out clause. Um, we're, we're going to have to discuss that. Could, could uh, Mr. Cordes and I have the leeway to go like a 30 to 90 day? We're not. We're not talking. All we're doing is accepting the proposal. We're not talking about the the actual item. Okay. Well, it just would help us. We need to get the ball rolling so you can bring us a, the proposal. Okay. Well, I'm or just the, uh, indicating 30 might be a little tight. So we'll get an opt-out clause in there, but we might want to work in the parameters of 30 to 90 or something. Okay, we're accepting this, and then we'll uh, vote on the contract or right. the agreement right. later. Right. Okay. Right. I, ju I just wanted to lock up the lot, right. okay. so we had, it, we had it locked up. Okay. okay. Mr. Moore? Aye. <clears throat> Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vancey? Aye. To authorize the Board of Commissioners to provide home repair assistance to Tom Bodasan, James Orr Sr., and Lauren Hartzell to tie into the sewer along Schwartz Road in the city of Avon, Ohio. The Lorain County Community Development Department has been taking applications for the home repair assistance through the Lorain County Community's Housing Improvement Program, that's the CHIP program, specifically at CDBG funds. The homeowners previously mentioned meet the grant requirements. The city of Avon requires all three properties to connect to the city sewer line. The following property owners will receive assistance in the form of a grant not to exceed $8,000. This would be broke down uh, Tom Bodison, the bid amount, $8,034.71. To be development part will pay $8,000. The contractor is Lad Trucking Incorporated. For James Orr, <laughs> the bid amount was $7,734.71. Uh, community Development Department will pay $7,734.71, and the contractor's Lad Trucking Incorporated. Lauren Hartzell, bid amount, $8,595.71. Community Development will pay $8,000, and the contractor's Kodiak Construction. All permit fees will be paid to the City of Avon, Ohio, in the amount of $2,200.71 per property owner. The Community Development Department is requesting permission to spend funds on behalf of the homeowners and are only acting as fiscal agent to these homeowners. Who pays the rest of that? The property owners pay the balance beyond the eight thousand. We have letters on file where they have indicated they will do that. Okay. Could you explain the program? This is part of our chip program, the uh, house improvement strategy to improve uh, houses for low income and elderly folks in Lorain County. Um, that are having a difficult time making home improvements that are necessary. Here is a particular case where obviously um, it would have cost the homeowners at least this $8,000, um, and in some cases we had received prices. We bid this three times in order to get these competitive prices. Um, at one venture, we were looking at $14,000 if we bid them out as a package deal. If the individual homeowners had banded together and the two people split one boring, if they had done that themselves, they probably, as a low-income resident, would have been faced with about $15,000 as their own share. So not only are we providing them $8,000, um, the worst-case scenario, it's less than $600 to get this, uh, what could have been originally a $15,000 um, connection to the sewer line. And Ron, this will be forgiven. It's given as a grant because yes. sometimes it's provided provided that they stay in the house five year period. That's what I need. Right. It's only a five year period. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Good job. Thanks. I'll move for approval. Second. Any more discussion? Mrs. Blair. Aye. Mrs. Vancey. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. 
like to authorize down payment assistance with Lorraine County CHIP funds in the amount of $8,500 to Tina M. Ferguson and Donald S. Sieber to purchase 4890 Ivanhoe Avenue in Sheffield Lake, Ohio. They will obtain a mortgage from First Ohio Mortgage Corporation of Independence, Ohio. This home was inspected by Pogemeyer Design Group, consultants for the Lorraine County CHIP program, and found to be safe and sound. The repair work that's necessary to bring this home up to code has been estimated at $5,170. The $8,500 will be made payable to the Millennium Title Company. So moved. This, this, Second. Excuse me. This, this was a the program for first-time buyers. <coughs> yes, Commissioner. It's a first-time buyer. We are supposed to provide assistance over a three-year period for five homeowners. This is the third one that we've been successful in, in helping. Okay. Any more discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vancey? Aye. I'd like to approve and enter into the Lorraine County Area-Wide Microenterprise Loan Program, that's a LAMP, agreements between the Board of Commissioners and a Small Business Development Center located at the Lorraine County Chamber of Commerce in Lorraine, Ohio, b the Women's Development Center located at the Lorraine County Community College in Larry, Ohio, and c the Lorraine County Joint Vocational School, Oberlin, Ohio. All the above agreements are not to exceed $5,000 per year for 2002, 2003, and 2004. The training is offered at a cost of not more than $250 per participant, and the technical assistance cost is $100 per participant. These costs range depending on the income of the participant. All agreements contain a 30-day written cancellation clause, and we need to authorize the president to execute on behalf of the board. Second. Discussion? Yeah, what's the what's the hundred dollars technical charge? You may have me on that one. Um, I know that we provide assistance as far as the training. There's a 13 weeks um, next level course that, that we provide, I believe. But I will uh, put in writing to clarify this. I believe that hundred dollars are for follow-up um, visits with the uh, LAMP applicants to make sure as they're applying for the money or after they receive money, if they're successful, to go out either by any of these three entities as an aftercare to make sure that if they're having a difficult time on preparing their business plan that they have follow-up aftercare to, uh, to give them assistance. And I believe that's what that is, and it was set at $100 per applicant. So that's not included in the 250. So actually, 250 is 350 per person. Not everybody receives or has to have that. Um, it's only a select few. I believe to date we have um, 48 people that we have taken care of, 49 perhaps. And I think we've only had to use that $100 um, once or twice. It's, it's rarely used, but it is there in case a particular uh, LAMP candidate needs some further assistance. We just don't train them and leave them alone. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. I'd like to authorize the following reimbursement payments to the cities of Oberlin and Amherst, Ohio, and the County of Lorraine from the CDBG Fiscal Year 99 funds. For A, Oberlin, Ohio has submitted an invoice seeking reimbursement up to $763 for sidewalks installed by the city as part of their park facilities improvements to Spring Street Park. B, Amherst, Ohio has submitted an invoice seeking reimbursement up to $1,500 for engineering design work for the basement restroom renovation to their city hall. And C, the County of Lorraine can be reimbursed for salaries, photocopies, printing, postage, and other administrative reimbursement costs up to $45,023.48 from miscellaneous expenses account. Also moved. Second. Discussion? Mm, yeah, Ron. <laughs> Why don't you just stay at the microphone, Ron? <laughs> yeah, these are all your issues, Ron. Uh, They're issue. already giving me a hard time, too much mic time. But oh, yes, sir. Ron doesn't have issues, do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't think, I thought they withdrew this for the basement work, number B. Um, I thought they withdrew it. Remember they withdrew one year. They re withdrew one year and then reapplied the following year to uh, to do it. We also then, as a part of the ninety nine grant, we had to actually bid a second time um, because the uh, the bid award date was uh, surpassed, and uh, we bid it a second time. Did the work, 
and now they're asking we have fifteen hundred dollars after we bid it the second time there was a cost saving the first time the city the the bids came in high higher than we had expected and uh, the city would have had to have provided some of the fund they were willing to do that but we rebid a second time and it actually came in at fifteen hundred dollars left and we are authorized to uh, reimburse for engineering or design expenses and that's what Amherst has done. Okay, I thought so we're, we're reimbursing them for engineer design work. Right. Didn't they do that already couple, in 99? As a part of the 99 project uh, that was... Which was canceled? That was canceled. It was... And we paid for it then too? Or? No, we oh, didn't okay. pay for it then. Their actual submittal was for like $3,800, I believe. Okay. We're only paying the amount that's left. <coughs> okay. um, and this design work, one of the reasons it was withdrawn in 97 or 98 was because the electric, they were supposed to renovate the whole basement and they finally came back and just renovated these two restrooms. So the electric had to be redesigned and upgraded and, and they made fan changes, uh, exhaust fan changes and things like that. So that's where the cost occurred for this particular program here. Okay, thanks. Any more discussion? Mrs. Boyer? Aye. Mrs. Vancey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. I'd like to approve and enter into an agreement on behalf of Lorraine County Department of Job and Family Services and Children's World Learning Center of Avon Lake, Ohio for child care services effective retroactive to February 15, 2002, expiring December 31, 2002, and authorize the President to execute on behalf of the Board. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mrs. Swear? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. I'd like to accept the recommendation of the Tax and Senate Review Council and approve the TURP report, which includes 40 tax abatement agreements. These agreements were approved by the committee on February 22nd and 25th, 2002. Three abatements expired during the year 2001, and another four will expire during calendar year 2002, and the county entered into four new abatements in 2001. All abatements were found in compliance, and 37 will be continued. So moved. Second. Discussion? Sorry. Ron, did you want to talk or did you wait for a question? This is the one I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, if I could give some information to the Board of Commissioners, um, Rebecca Jones um, and the rest of the staff worked hard on this and we think that it's important to give some highlights on just exactly what happens during these annual reviews and I will do that quickly. In total, over two days, about 15 minutes apart, we met with 40 different abatement companies, uh, or uh, different abatements, 33 different companies were involved in those 40 abatements. 37 were recommended for continuation, three expired, and that's the difference between the 40 and the 37. Um, we have four that are due to expire at the end of this year. We have four new ones that came online, Poly 1, Beckett Air, and two for Whirl Away during the course of the year 2001 that are starting in 2002. In total, 2,281 jobs were retained for Lorraine County. 1,646 jobs were created. We anticipate yet an another, an additional 250 jobs to be created by these uh, four new abatements. Um, it, saw a, a expenditure or increased payroll for Lorraine County of $95 million as a result of these tax abatements and also a $280 million real and personal property investment into Lorraine County as a result of these abatements. The average abatement ends up uh, calculating out as an average at 65% and the life average would be seven years. We wish to thank the commissioners and their representatives that participated in those two days of meetings. Certainly our staff and the auditor had two representatives there as well going through and all of the cities and companies and school districts that were involved in, in this process. So we thought we should take a, a moment and express this. Thank you. Uh, before you leave, Ron, uh, what was the number of jobs again? Would you... Uh... The jobs retained was 2,281. The jobs created were two, uh, 1,646, and we anticipate an additional 250 jobs to yet be created. You know, some of these have, most of them have a three-year startup, so 
Most of those jobs will come with the four new ones in 2001, but there are a couple that started in 2000 or 99 that are still creating jobs. 2,281 retained, 1,646 created with the potential of another 250. I wouldn't say potential, with 250 more coming. Okay, yes. just take the word potential, potential out. Okay. Right. Yeah. Jake, next time, but give that we to will, her so we she will can put work, it in print so we can look at it. We will work diligently to get those 250 uh, yeah. as those tax abatements uh, start. Thank you. Sure. They have to meet that quota? <clears throat> yes, they have to meet that quota, um, and we work with them. I should point out, too, that this is... The, our jurisdiction lies in Lorraine County with the exception of City of Elyria and Lorraine that run their own tax abatement. So these jobs and, and investments do not include the numbers that are realized in the City of Elyria and Lorraine. Also, um, Ron, what happens to those ones that have expired? Will they come back? Can they come back? They can only come back if they make any new hires or investment levels. Certainly they can. Um, we're not aware of any that are working on there unless they are expanding or picking up new uh, ventures. Um, They're not going to be leaving, are they? No. Okay. No. What about Ford? They're expanding out here. Uh, have you guys worked with them yet? With Ford? Yeah. Ford just had a Avon uh, plant. Mm -hmm tax abatement, that was one of the three it, that, that expired. terminated, yeah, right. expired. Um, the city of Avon takes a leads on, lead on that. We have communicated as much as Ford will allow us okay. um, a willingness to sit down and talk about tax abatement if they're doing a new product line and expansion in the Avon plant. So we've made that, that offer. So has Mayor Smith with the city of Avon. Okay, good. Thanks, Ron. Thank you for giving me this air time. And thanks, <laughs> thanks to everybody that participated, because I, I know my assistant did and, and your staff and everybody, and it does involve all the communities and school boards, like you said. So thanks again. We want to recognize them. Any more discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Vancey? Aye. I'd like to issue a notice to proceed letter to Plass Brothers Paving Incorporated of Elyria, Ohio, for the parking lot rehab south side of Temple Court by the administration building, effective uh, March 25th, 2002. The contract was awarded by resolution 02174 on March 7th, 2002. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. I to authorize the county administrator to negotiate a contract with Amherst Township, Ohio, to become part of Lorraine County's health care, effective April 1st, 2002, expiring December 31st, 2004. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, commissioners, at, at this time, I'd like to ask to modify this resolution. Uh, it may have been presumptuous to me, but I already have the contracts here. And uh, I'd like to uh, modify to uh, enter in and approve. There, the contract, their outstanding uh, health care contracts. Uh, the one thing that I would still require is the ability to uh, work with them on their reserve payments and how many months they make their reserve payments. We, uh, we haven't uh, quite finished that. There's no problem with the reserve, but uh, we want to make it as uh, easy for the township to pay that reserve factor as possible. And we'll work that out by MOU as we've done the other three groups that have joined recently. Okay, I'll amend, uh, as the mover of the motion, I'll amend it to authorize the contract. Effective uh, April 1st. As it's listed on the agenda. So I'm negotiating it to accept. <coughs> uh, Jim, CCAO the other day, uh, we were discussing uh, the health insurance, and counties are really having some difficulty with this, mm -hmm. and CCAO is going to be asking for a survey on different counties, and they did talk about adding additional people and, and, and what that means to our insurance and how it reduces what the employees have to pay and what the counties have to pay. So at some point I may ask you for some type of report that I can go back with I, uh, to let them know what Lorraine County is doing and how, how, how we're doing on our insurance. I certainly would mind helping you straighten them out. <laughs> uh, well, I think should, I'd like to see you send a letter to them and maybe get in the newsletter about what we are doing. I think it'd be That's a good idea. Uh, we can certainly do that. Mr. Fote, can you take that? Let's wake him up. <laughs> a lot of counties are not self-insured uh, the way we are. They're, they're not doing as well as we are. Exactly. Uh, things are changing. We, we've seen some cost increase. We're, we're, we're trying to stay on top of those, but we're growing. Uh, we have uh, 1,800 and 
60 contracts now with about 6,000 users. And we have, the, we have the best game and lowest rates in town. Uh, that's because the commissioners have, and, and your staff have spent a, a great deal of time making sure that, that happens. But you know, sometimes I really feel guilty when I go to the doctor or the hospital and use that health insurance when I know that there are people out there that don't have health insurance, can't get prescriptions, and it really makes me feel like, should I really use this? You know? Well, this is the time to plug the Save Well program then, mm -hmm. okay? It's time for a commercial on Save Well. Yeah, I think we're over 4,000 people. We're, we're growing. Yeah. Uh, we get calls periodically. Uh, it's nice when uh, normally from, from some of our uh, older residents, they, they call in and, and they're grateful that they've saved a few dollars on a prescription here and there. Uh, we, uh, we're, post, we're getting ready to post that information on the Internet so that it will be available to everybody. Uh, but uh, <coughs> where would you like to... Well, I just I want to say that that uh, I was asked again within the last two weeks. That there's no cost or obligation on the part of the person, and I said absolutely none. And so you need to give the phone number or something. I don't have it I, or the source code. I, I have to be honest, but no, we don't walk around with you it. You why not? Person. <laughs> but. Uh, I will bring it to our next meeting, and okay. we can we can we can give it out and again. And there was a, a blurb in the senior uh, years uh, newspaper, a nice little article. This last edition, it gave the the phone number and the source code. You have to use that. But there are a lot of people that it, it's it's small, but it's better than nothing. It, it's it's small, but I only know of, uh, two or three other public entities that are doing this, and we've had calls from other counties and uh, our, our neighbors to the west in uh, Huron County. Huron. Uh, are, are, uh, <laughs> we were able to send uh, our consultant over and put a program into place for those folks over there when they heard about what we were doing here. Wonderful. So uh, it, it's a trickle-down effect, uh, but we, we were at the, at the lead. Once again, Lorain County Yes, yeah, someone, called, someone <coughs> called me yesterday, and they didn't have insurance. And, and just to fill in, I suggested uh, the Save Well prescription card, and they called Sandy. And to find out, they were already on it. So it, it was a it was a good feeling to know that this person was saving something anyway. But I'll, uh, I'll amend my second. Any more discussion, Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vancey? Aye. But to authorize the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners to provide emergency home repair assistance to Eugene McGuire, Raymond and Deborah Wagner in Leary Township and Wilfredo and Carmen Ceza in Sheffield Lake through its CDBG fiscal year 2001 grant. Eugene McGuire and Larry Township received foundation repair from Logsdon and Sons Incorporated for $5,700. Raymond and Deborah Wagner, Wagner of Leary Township, a septic replacement with Kodiak Construction, $5,830.84. Wilfredo and Carmen Ceza at Sheffield Lake receive a new boiler and hot water tank with Geisel heating and air conditioning, $5,400. These are the lowest and most responsive quotes received, and the above contracts will be paid from the emergency home repair account. I'll so move. I'll second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Can I just throw this in? Excuse sorry, me. Sorry. But we were talking about this health insurance, but I don't know. There might be a lot of people that don't realize, low-income people, that if they uh, contact the Job and Family <coughs> Services Department, and oftentimes just uh, just a form, an application form is sufficient where they don't have to go into the department, but they may qualify for Medicaid or, or some kind of child um, uh, insurance for their children. I'm, I'm not certain of the telephone number, but they also have a telephone number where people can call. We also, we also have an outreach person in the Elyria <coughs> right. Health Department and the Lorraine Health Department. So if they, uh, if they don't have the opportunity to go to uh, ODJS out, uh, out in uh, Elyria Township, they can visit one of the local health departments and be provided that information also. Yeah. Sometimes people are embarrassed to go to the uh, Jobs and Family Service Department. That's why I'm saying there is an application they could fill out and just mail in. Sorry about the interruption, but I thought it was important for people well, to know. Fine. Okay. I'd like to advertise for proposals from profit and not-for-profit agencies to provide services for adult daycare, homemaker home health aides, adult shelter, and adult guardianship for the Department of Job and Family Services. These proposals will be received until 2 p.m. on Monday, April 15, 2002. We have to publish the notice in the Chronicle Telegram and Morning Journal on March 28th and April 5th, 2002. Second. Any discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassell? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. 
I'd authorize loaning $121,455 to the City of Lorain, Ohio for the right-of-way on Colorado Avenue in Lorain, Ohio out of the County Engineer's Bond Funds. Resolution number 01-1006-A, adopted November 1st, 2001, authorized this office to spend up to $138,545 from the bond fund to pay for the right-of-way on Colorado Avenue. These funds are to be reimbursed by ODOT. After the appraisals were completed, the appraised cost on the right-of-way was actually $260,000. On March 11th, the City of Lorraine passed Ordinance 31002, agreeing to repay the county engineer over a four-year period beginning in 2003, the amount of $121,455. The county would loan these funds to the city out of the engineer's bond funds. This will supply sufficient funds to purchase the right-of-way that has already agreed and begin eminent domain proceedings on the parcels that have not signed. ODOT has indicated they could not fund these additional amounts. The engineer has contacted NOACA, and preliminary indications are that there may be additional federal funds to pay the $121,455. If so, in so, the loan would um, would repair will be repaid from federal funds. Um, also, move for approval. I am sure you're going to ask the engineer to comment on this, but I will say that uh, last Friday I was at uh, a NOACA Transportation Advisory Committee meeting, and Mayor Fulton had just left an RTIS meeting, which is the subcommittee of the TAC, and he said that he had received positive response from NOACA about supplying these additional funds. So um, I think it's, it, it'll all come together, but this is something that needs to be done so the City of Lorraine can proceed with this project that we've worked on for so long. I'll second. Any more discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Bassing? Aye. I can designate Saturday, May 18th, 2002, as Lorraine County Tire Collection Day. Central Ohio Contractors will be the contractor for this event. The collection will be held from 9 a.m. through 3.30 p.m. at various locations within the county, and those will be listed in the resolution. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mr. Cordes, comments? I have some significant comments this morning, so I, you may want to go. Uh, we have a 10.30 public hearing. You may wish to go to that before I start. You can't be done in three minutes? Absolutely not. Sir. Okay. We won't go to the hearing. We gotta wait till exactly 10:30, so we might as well. well I, no, I we have, can jump over you. We'll I have a couple housekeeping things I can do that can be done. Okay. Yes. I don't think Jerry likes us going a couple minutes early. So. Uh, I'm going to be requesting a resolution uh, to amend resolution uh, 2-88 to read uh, as follows, and I'll explain it to you afterwards. Uh, to say, and the funding source for the increase in the workforce investment, uh, uh, we have funds for the employment network uh, operations and service. The two sources of funding totaling $475,770 or $438,668 for rapid response funding for a dislocated worker for ITs and other training is needed, $37,102 from one stop implement implementation funds. This is a housekeeping resolution. You already passed a resolution agreeing to the funds. Uh, ODJS is saying we need to split them. Our resolution uh, had them all lumped into one. They won't make payment on this until we split these two numbers out. Uh, it's, an, it's a bit in the abstract to you, but there's some supporting paperwork. Uh, I'll leave that with the clerk. Uh, this is nothing more than housekeeping, no changes whatsoever. They wanted the resolution modified, and, and obviously I just want to make sure we get our funds out into, into the community. So I'm asking for a resolution to uh, make that change. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Jim, does this go to Roxy? Yes. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you also make me a copy? That was my only one. And the uh, if you could have the resolution done rapidly and communicated to Mr. Ogle so that he can access the dollars, I'd be appreciative. I think that consumed <laughs> three minutes here. So. Ready for the hearing, Roxanne? <coughs> yeah. okay, we have a public hearing scheduled for the Carlisle Farm, Farms, number one, and, number one and number two, the Carlisle Township. Uh, detention Basin Maintenance Costs, Developer Scott Dillon. 
Uh, he has requested that the detention basin and outlet pipe for the subdivision be placed on perpetual maintenance in accordance with <coughs> Fire Rise Code Section 6131.63. This basin is constructed on the west side of State Route 301 and will benefit two subdivisions plus six lot splits. For A, Carlisle Farms, number one, on the east side of State Route 301, is platted, plus six lot splits along Slife Road. And B, Carlisle Farms, number two, 21 sublots with new road to be constructed in the future on the west side of State Route 301. Each sublot benefiting from these drainage items shall pay their prorated share by acreage, which amounts to 5% of the total construction cost of $43,800. The 5% of $43,800 is $2,190 per year, which will be paid by all sublots. Property owners would pay 5% per year. This money would stay in an account through the county auditor's office, which the engineer would use for repairs or maintenance. And also at this time at this hearing, the developer has requested that Carlisle Farms number two, the name be changed to Ravine's Edge number one. Uh, resolution number 02151, adopted February 21st, 2002, has scheduled this hearing. Property owners were uh, received a notice uh, of this hearing by certified mail on March 11th, 2002, and a notice was published in the Chronicle Telegram on February 27th and March 6th, 2002. Okay, um, Jerry, I just, would anybody like to uh, speak? They have to be sworn in, so please stand. If anybody thinks they're going to test, have any comments, or make any statements or anything about this, they have to stand and be sworn in. Each of you swear or affirm that the statements that you shall give shall be the truth that you shall answer unto God or under the penalty of the law of perjury. I'm the developer of Scott Dillon with Rain Tree Development. And um, just wanted to comment that the second phase is called Ravine's Edge 1 and Carlisle Farms 2. <clears throat> Is there any additional information you would need of me? Do you have any comments? Any more? No, I do not. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Engineer, do you have any comments? Nothing further. Just that the uh, the detention basin was already constructed. So oh. now we're ready to tie in number two. Uh, Ravine's Edge number one, I'm saying, and that this will serve as 46 <clears throat> lots, um, and then each lot benefited will pay their prorated share every okay. year state for our name. maintenance. State your name too for oh, Wayne Maletti, County Engineer. Thanks, Wayne. Office, thank you. Okay, is that it? That's all. Thank you. Any township trustees here to speak? Any property owners here to speak? I guess it's the commissioners have to make either an approval or reject this request. Are we prepared to do that today? Also move for approval. Second. Any more discussion? No, the changes. The name changes. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Conclude the public hearing. Okay. Do I have to make that motion or no? We don't have to close the public hearing? No, oh, okay. It's concluded. Uh, as we've been keeping the board uh, aware, we've been working on our Justice Center financing, uh, preparing for our groundbreaking on May 3rd. Uh, our schedule was to award bids on April 18th. We were going to be receiving the bids on April 10th. Uh, I'm pleased to inform you once again that we still are uh, well on track to that. But we would like a little bit more time on working on our financing uh, for about a week of additional time. Uh, what I'm going to propose to the board, uh, and this will be well within our time frames, is that we award uh, part of the bids on April 18th uh, for approximately $14 million. And we award the balance of the uh, bids on April 25th. 
In order to award on April 18th, we have to have the availability of the $14 million, which needs to be certified by the auditor's office. Uh, we're fairly close to that sum right now and, and with our Q construction money that we transferred last year. We've also put approximately a million four hundred thousand dollars aside uh, towards uh, the Justice Center in this year's budget. What I'd like to do is move that money to Q Construction by way of an, an advance. And I'm going to ask for a resolution to do that, so that we can award the partial bills, uh, partial bids on April 18th, thereby keeping the project uh, on track and affording us a little bit more time, so we don't have to rush on our bond. Uh, issue. And I'd like to read this resolution for you. So I'll be requesting a resolution authorizing and directing the Commissioner's Budget Department to fiscally implement the advance of $1,435,000 presently appropriated within the County's General Fund for the Justice Center Project to the Q Construction Justice Center Fund and to appropriate such amount in the Q Construction Fund. Said $1,435,000 to be refunded to the County's General Fund upon the issuance and deposit a proceeds of the Justice Center general obligation bond debt issued to the Q Construction Justice Center Fund. I'll pass this to you for your review. Uh, once again, in, in uh, summary, uh, this will allow us to award the first $14 million of bid, which will keep the project on track, and then we will award the remainder of the bids uh, upon closing of the bond. The bond should close on April 24th, and we should be making the uh, remainder of the bids uh, approval on April 25th, and the groundbreaking will be on May 3rd as scheduled. This does not deviate from our schedule, but does give us a little added time, and we would appreciate that. Do we need a certificate of availability, did you say, for the $14 million? We will, and, and, and at this point, uh, uh, I'd like Mr. Rokasi to possibly come forward and speak a little bit to this issue. As you know, uh, John and Ms. Davis are part of the team that's uh, project managing this, and John can speak better than I can. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, this really doesn't delay the project. I think that's the main point we're trying to make here. Uh, we're working with new consul, uh, bond consul. Uh, we're working with new underwriters. Uh, there's a lot of work going on. I guess the long and short of that is that, uh, as Jim is saying, there's a phase one and phase two of the financing that we're working with these groups on. Uh, phase one, the money that's needed is $14 million. Uh, as I said in the past, the board has wisely put away several millions of dollars in the past. Um, what we're doing here is to allocate another $1.4 million to satisfy that particular need. You have to say, uh, forgive me here, I've had a cold, the flu, so it's a little bit bad for me. We're recognizing that this is an advance. Yeah. Do we need to make this as, as an advance? I mean, um, does it have to come back to the general fund? Can't we just use it? That's a good point, Commissioner Vasey. Uh, the $1.4 million is termed an advance rather than a transfer. That's very important uh, language. Uh, what that means, in effect, is that once the money is uh, advanced to the Q construction, once the proceeds of the bonds come in, we can pull that money back, or the board can pull the money back. Is it necessary to do that? Can't we just pay this and, and not borrow that much money then? You can, Commissioner, but I would recommend the flexibility of bringing it back. That gives the commissioners more flexibility. So we can uh, still forgive it later. That's correct. You can transfer it back. That's precisely right. Uh, later as a permanent transfer of money, or you could keep it in the general fund. So uh, by advancing it, you get flexibility. By quote, transferring it today, you don't have the flexibility to bring it back in a general fund. So my recommendation strongly would be to use the term advance. Then when the money comes in from the uh, bond proceeds, you can supplement uh, or exchange, in effect, that money uh, that you've advanced uh, and bring the money back if you so desire or permanently transfer it. But I would strongly recommend the term advance. That gives you flexibility <laughs> in your financing structure. Mr. Chairman, I also move for approval as outlined by the, uh, but, um, the administrator and the uh, budget director. I'll second. Discussion? Any more? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vanson? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye.
Thank you, Commissioners. Once again, for the, I need to repeat this. We are on schedule and on track. Uh, this works within our time frame. No modifications here. Well, I appreciate what you and your team is doing, too. Thank you, sir. I know it's not, it's not an easy task. Well, uh, the next task that I'm going to discuss with you is probably going to be more difficult than the Justice Center, and that's finding parking for all our employees. While the Justice Center is being built, we are going to be faced with a uh, potential shortage of parking spaces. And I do approve, I appreciate you approving the proposal from the Y uh, that gave us some additional breathing room in that issue. Uh, some of the things that I'm going to outline here for you will be expanded upon further by Ms. Davis, who has been really doing a dynamite job at uh, trying to coordinate all of this. We still think we're short a bit on the parking, too. The broader concept that I'm going to be asking the board to decide upon is uh, taking our parking deck, uh, number one, and making that completely employee parking with no parking for the public. Uh, and I will address public parking issues as part of this process in a moment. The reason I'm going to recommend that is because I normally don't have the ability to try to tow people out of the garage if they're parking inappropriately. It's almost impossible to do so. And, it's, and, and the parking deck is secured. It's easier for me to control people coming in with passes than it is on some of our flat lots. Uh, that will allow us to issue about 430 passes. Uh, we have to maintain a certain amount of uh, handicap access spots, even if it's a private parking lot. The corner lot right across from the admin building, which is very uh, easy for the public to use, I'm going to recommend that that goes to public parking, no employee parking. Uh, I also am working, and Ms. Davis has been working with, uh, having a company come in and monitor that lot. I'm going to recommend that that become two-hour parking, just like all the uh, city of Valeria spots, and that that be patrolled. My concern is that the construction workers will come downtown and they'll fill up the lots. And there'll be no parking for the employees and the public. Uh, I, I can't tell a construction worker at 7 o'clock in the morning from a member of the public if they want to park in any of our lots. Right now, they can come into the deck and pay their $3 for the day, which I think they would do. And we can't keep them out. Uh, we are going to provide parking. Hopefully, we're, we're going to reach some terms uh, with the Elyria Library to use their uh, grounds adjacent to the train depot uh, just a few blocks from here. We're also repaving the lot behind the parking deck, which will afford us an additional 34 spaces there. We've just completed uh, uh, purchase of a lot uh, adjacent to the Bowles building from the city. Uh, that will provide us some additional parking there, but we're still going to be very, very squeezed. Uh, we've come up with a formula. We want to reissue parking passes. Uh, we're going to have colored zones, uh, red, white, blue, and orange. Uh, to give out passes. Right now, employees with a county parking pass can park in any of our available lots. Uh, that won't be after April 15th, if you approve some of these plans we're, we're laying out. They will we'll, we'll be assigned to a lot, and that's where they will park. They won't be able to park in the other lots. Uh, this way, we can get a total number and know who's coming and going from those lots. Uh, we're probably going to locate uh, juror parking uh, down in the public parking lot that Elyria has on, on Washington Avenue and go back to the shuttle. Uh, uh, for C Commissioner Moore, you weren't here a few years ago. What we used to do before we had these lots over here, uh, we used to shuttle the jurors up and down from Washington Avenue. We provided a small bus and one of our maintenance workers brought the jurors back and forth. Uh, it wasn't a very pleasant experience and it didn't, it was uh, at times difficult and, and had some uh, tension in it, but we need to go back to doing that. Last year, I, I, I uh, procured one of the old uh, uh, transit buses that we did a little bit of work on, and we have that bus available. We're working with getting some of our maintenance workers a CDL, plus we have a small van that doesn't require a CDL to do that. In addition, this lot behind the parking deck is not going to be done in time for us to utilize, so I'm going to have not have the availability of those 34 spots until sometime in May. It wasn't to a lack of planning, but it was to availability of weather to get the job on the way. Uh, it just, we just weren't able to get it done because of, of time constraints and weather, not, not planning. We plan for this properly. Uh, 
what I'm going to recommend is that we take all our county fleet vehicles and we park them at the park and ride adjacent to the county dog pound. Uh, people that need a vehicle will have to drive out there, drop their vehicle, and pick up a county vehicle. I don't know how long that's going to last. I have talked with uh, the county, had, excuse me, Ms. Davis has spoken with the county maintenance director uh, to provide additional security lighting out there. The sheriff's department does uh, do extra patrols on that lot out there and our dog pounds adjacent, and we, we're open six days a week for about 12 hours a day. So there is a, a certain amount of security out there. That's not going to be very pleasing to a lot of people on the county vehicles, but it has to be done. Uh, I did look into uh, Ms. Vasey's request on, on the lots out by uh, Hathaway. If we're unable to reach uh, a good economic terms with the O'Leary Library to park the uh, construction workers uh, on that site, we may have to, to go to that site uh, out at Hathaway. My concern out there is that we're still responsible for busing those folks into downtown to the work site. And that got, we did get some cost figures last year from both transit, and we tried to work them up. Our people doing it, and it was very, very costly to do that. We're hoping that we can park them over here. There's, a, there's some added benefit to parking them over here. Uh, they'll be passing through downtown area. I'm sure the merchants, you know, for uh, certain establishments over there will be, uh, be grateful that they're they're going through the downtown area to go to that parking lot. So if we can keep them close to the downtown, not only does it limit our cost, but it also uh, will encourage spending in the downtown area area. So that's an additional benefit that uh, I'm hoping occurs uh, and, and it stimulates that area. Excuse me. It is possible, too, though, that they may have tools in their vehicles that they need uh, to walk to get. So it, the closer they are, probably the better off we are. Right. Thank you for pointing that out, Commissioner. We, we do have some backup plans that we can use the train depot. Uh, uh, there's parking spaces down there. I had originally thought to, uh, to uh, move uh, our fleet vehicles down to the parking depot, but I feel they'll be more secure uh, out in the parking lot or park and ride lot. But uh, I also don't want to count on the train depot uh, over a period of, of, of the next few years as a long-term solution uh, because I believe that uh, funding will be made available at, at the state and federal level to uh, get that project underway, and uh, that would, if we're using that as part of our long-term strategy, it will complicate that strategy. Uh, with that, Karen, would you would you explain some of, Karen gave you a handout, will you explain some of the thinking on these lots and how you... Karen Davis, D-A-V-I-S. Um, basically, what we've done here is we've tried to provide parking for the employees as close to the facilities that they work in as possible. We've gotten a few stragglers here and there. There's, uh, we had to allow for a certain amount of handicapped parking for each parking lot. And with the um, WISE parking lot, it helped us out a lot because there was 39 spaces there, and um, we were able to use that lot for adult probation, which would be real convenient for them instead of them crossing the, the road. Um, what we've done basically is we've taken the parking lot over by the Commerce Court area and the adult probation lab, and that would be issued parking permits, and they would be blue permits, and each permit would have a number on it. There's a total of 40 parking spaces there, so we'd have one through 40. And basically, the lots are um, outlined the same. The courthouse lot would be the red lot with 40 spaces. The Y lot, the yellow lot, with 39 spaces. We have also have um, Ron Twining's parking lot. They have uh, a total of 14 parking spaces and only 11 employees. So we're going to stick a few of uh, the administration building employees in there. Um, and there'll be a total of 45 spaces available for the public on the corner of Middle and uh, Third Street. Does that count those three we're going to sneak in office? That does not count those three that we're sneaking in. Well, that'll be 48, hopefully. Um, the only thing I think Jim did not mention was the fact that these numbers are for existing permit holders only. <clears throat> there is no space available at this time for any new employees. 
I don't think we're hiring any new ones pretty soon anyway. Well, uh, a, a couple things, and, and, and uh, that's correct. We, we estimate right now about 20 short to start with. Right. Uh, so that's one issue. The second issue is uh, over time there's been growth in other departments, whether we hire or not. We're, we're only a small part of the parking situation down here, sir. Um, we also have the issue of visiting judges and visiting magistrates that we have to deal with. Uh, we're going to be restricting some of the uh, officials, uh, both elected and appointed, that have parking spaces in the deck right now, but only come down here uh, seldom, uh, once a week or once every other week. Uh, they're not going to have spots. It's not going to make them too happy. But we will provide for four or five in the back of the new lot that we're paving out behind the building for county vehicles. When, when they visit us down here, they're going to have to bring a county vehicle uh, or they're going to have to be a designated person to park there. It'll be temporary parking for them. Right now, we're, we're, us we're utilizing a whole space, and they're never here. So these, these are, well, well, I don't want to use the word drastic. They're, 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 they're very significant changes. Uh, well, they're not, I mean, when you say the public won't be allowed to park here, I don't think it's going to be an issue for, uh, it's going to be more of an issue of the contract workers that come in and use our building, the lawyers that come in. I think that's where the issue is going to come in, don't you think? Now, in the recorder's office and the law library, when you, when you totaled up the 430 spaces, are those actual county employees? Or are you yes. including contracted employees that come in? And, okay. Our employees. What I did um, is I contacted each department and asked them okay. how many employees you have, and they told me. Okay. So that's where the, all these numbers come from. So that's where our issues are going to come in at. And, and I've already gotten complaints from some of the people about the city of Valeria. Councilman, <laughs> I see Councilman, Councilman Blevins is with That's us. That's why I had to throw that together, together with the safety service director, yeah. Mr. Eichenlaw. Yeah. Talking about Good the, talking about the two-hour uh, parking and and the sheriff only up front, and they had some issues with that. Um, well, so uh, uh, I mean, some of these things that like the sheriff's department was only here till 4:30, yet it says you know, some of these people are working past 4:30. And they're feeling like they're being ticketed for no other reason except you know. In interestingly enough. Uh, the, the situation when the Justice Center is complete will be similar to this admin building. The city of Illyria will control the parking in mm -hmm. front of the Justice Center. So that's been an issue here, and it may be an issue that we need to uh, deal with with the city, and, and hopefully we'll have some favorable outcome that we don't end up with the same problem in front of the Justice Center that we have here. Yeah, we have a parking garage. We won't have any issues, right? <laughs> we do have a parking garage, sir. I, did, I didn't hear that. Did you, Commissioner <laughs> Basie? <laughs> Uh, to be discussed at another time, I think. Thank you. First things first. <laughs> Have you had a chance to contact the priest at St. Mary's about their parking? Karen? Um, I called this morning and left a message in, and he's supposed to give me a call back. So, we're, you know, we'll have to wait and see on that one. M Ms. Davis' recollection of that issue was similar to mine, that uh, they were very uh, amenable to us parking in their spaces uh, during the summer months, but that during the school school uh, yeah, that they, they, they didn't want to do that. Uh, but you never know for yeah. children they, to play. Yeah, no. they have some in the back. There's some area that they, if they knew that they were going to get paid for the part, to, right. for us to use it, they might be willing to we're, we're give up some space. We're, we're going to speak to them again, as, as you suggested. Uh, uh, it's, it's a one that Karen and I haven't been picked up. We've been uh, c cruising the back alleys and lots and uh, every place around. Uh, <laughs> Illyria looking yeah, for not a personal uh, stuff. All right, okay. Uh, but you know, we, we assume that individually, they not together. Uh, like, <laughs> uh, we, we, we have been everywhere. We, I was we pretty have, explicit about yes, that. Yes, you were. <laughs> uh, we, we have been looking everywhere. We've, we've gone, uh, you know, every direction looking for availability within reason. Now, we have been offered some parking areas that are not within reason in the cost, and I have not presented those to the board. Uh, some of them are a bit on the absurd side, so we're not that desperate yet. Uh, we may get that way. I'm hoping we don't. Uh, so we still have some other issues uh, that we have to tackle, which is gaining more parking. I guess what I'm asking the board for here, I need to implement this parking change on April 15th. We're going to start fencing off the site, which is, and it's what it's a very positive sign that we're breaking ground on May 3rd. I don't have a lot of time left. 
What do, you, um, what do you want? Do you want us to pass legislation so we can uh, not allow people to come into the parking lot to, to ticket? Do you, you need to you, do that, or is that what you? I, I just some kind of verbal uh, uh, affirmation that you find the plan that we're laying out to be somewhat suitable. Uh, there's never going to be a perfect plan, and there's never going to be a plan that doesn't affect or adversely affect the number of people. We're doing the best we can not to have that happen. We'll also be presenting a, a contract to you for somebody to patrol the lot on the corner at no cost to the county, uh, but they will be towing. And, and um, uh, Commissioner Vasi and I had quite a bit of discussion over this yesterday. We remember the days when we did try to tow from some of our flat lot and, and, and the things that, that occurred afterwards. It, it wasn't very pleasing, but it's something that needs to be done. Uh, commissioners, you will be getting some adverse uh, calls and complaints and probably some personal visits if somebody's car is towed from that lot. We, we've been through that in the early 90s before. It needs to be done, though. Uh, there's, wow. there's simply no way if we clog up that parking lot with people working on the construction sites, there will be no parking for reasonable uh, people that have some business to do in this in this building. It simply won't exist. I think these guys are going to want us to get their meetings over in two hours or less now. <laughs> so that's what, that's what it's going to affect. Right. Well, some people will expect us to pay their towing bill. Mm -hmm. no. I mean, we've had this in the past where uh, they... I don't think so. But they, they approach us and ask us to pay the towing bill and uh, the fee to get their car out of the impound. Well, I believe we Mr. Have that. Ennis is going to help us out with that by giving us some language to put on a sign so that we can notify the people who are parking there. I think communication is the key. Yeah, and if we approve exactly. this today and you're going to send letters out to all the departments affected. This is the plan and the reasoning behind it. And, and there will, yes, and we will be doing a lot of posting. The reason I'm presenting this now is we have a lot of signage to remove and a lot of signage to put up. You work with the engineer's office on that? We will be through the maintenance department. Uh, they've always been very supportive with the signing, uh, signage for the, for the parking decks. Uh, th there is a lot of work to do. Uh, there's going to be some employees that are going to be uh, uh, pretty irate, too, because they're not going to get parking passes or they're not going to get them where they want them. Uh, commissioners, this is not an easy issue. It's not one that's going to be resolved just by this discussion and decisions here. It's, there's going to be other things, I believe, that are going to fall out along the way. We've tried to think of everything. But I know there's going to be more issues with this, and we're going to have but, to revisit But this takes care of all the par parking issues with all the employees at the county, correct? It, it captures the, 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 uh, a great deal of Without it. any new ones. We're not talking about new ones. And then it also captures all the construction workers. It looks like you had a plan for that. Yes. Okay, so the... Recognizing I'm still 20, 20 we estimate 20 spots short. There's one last leg of this, and... and uh, Are your 20 spaces short? Yes, sir, I am. And I'm reading this. The, the What's this after removing custodians? What are you doing? Getting rid of them? I was getting. <laughs> well, we come in at night. Oh, we're all coming well, in cleaning now. I was getting ready to uh, to go to that that prom, uh, <coughs> it, and I, I, I uh, well, I guess it's as good a time as any. Uh, I really haven't talked to the union uh, too much on this, Jeff. Have you? Have, have you? Yeah. We've laid a little bit of found foundation. I'm probably going to ask that the custodians come in at five, rather than four. That's 15 parking spots, and at 5 o'clock, uh, you realize how empty this deck is. There's a big wind tunnel. Just <laughs> yes, you have to hold on for the sucking. <laughs> yeah, 4.30. Going out. Uh, with them coming in at 5, that'll free up parking spots for them, uh, rather than having them come in 4 and trying to circle what will be a very full lot. So trying is that, to find that's space. how many? That's 15? Roughly 15. So is that, are you including that in your 20? No. So you're talking about after removing, you're, already, you're saying we're still 20 short. After you deal with the custodians, right? Yes. So where are you going to get the 20? I'll figure it out, sir. So what do you need? Well, you're asking us to make a decision that's not going to correct it. I have a 98% plan. It's better than no percent plan. <laughs> uh, so uh, we need to move forward with this, and I'll, I will continue to work this issue. If, if I'm not able to uh, capture enough parking for those 20 people, we're not going to issue those 20 passes, and, and each one of these departments in the building is going to have to deal with that. What about the corner lot that you got issued for public? Well, we have to see how much utilization we get by the public in it before we give out those spots to the employees. We really need to provide for public parking and, and uh, suitable public parking. Remembering these 20 people can go down to the lot on Lake Avenue, the city lot, and park down there. Washington, Washington. Washington, excuse me. Thank you. Also, 
uh, Chris is here. I understand that you'll have some freed up parking soon behind the city hall, right, uh, for public? That would be correct, but we're not sure what that. Our schedule is kind of delayed a little bit, too, so it's not marrying the time frame together. Well, how I, I know you're signaling how, but <laughs> he's not. This is a quick answer. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but that's not going to happen this summer either. Uh, but uh, somewhere in, in, while we're involved with our project, their project will be uh, completing, and there'll be some additional public well, parking but that's this, not available. This now. summer, I think you can pick some spots up from St. Mary's once school's out the first part of June. So maybe it'll help. For parking. And well, they've always been very, very takes, receptive. Yeah, yeah it takes care of the time pressure that you're going to have. Right. But where's these 20, where, the, where are the 20 coming from? Well, let's see, you're one. I know, so I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. I'm, try try towing that Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to take that and we're going to spread it if we're not able to find additional spots. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, we're going to spread it over all the departments. Nobody's going to be hit. Okay, so you haven't, you, what you've done is you've added up the total space and you just know there's 20 short. Mm -hmm. Correct. They're not in each, they're not in the yellow lot, the white lot. I mean, you don't know who's going to where. You haven't identified who's going to which lot yet, have you? No, we identified by departments and agency, right. though. Like solid waste is over on Commerce Court. We would right. put them in the blue lot over there. Right, but you have 40, how many employees? You got yes. total parking, 40. You don't know how many employees are in this. You got solid waste, you kind of all identified. Mm -hmm. How many employees that you got in this list? We're talking about the blue lot. We're talking about the blue lot. I yeah. have an itemized list of each department and the number of employees. Oh, okay. Also, I just thought for oh, ease okay. of looking at it, I, I wouldn't include all. I was that. just interested. It's nothing. I guess <laughs> why that we decide. We will. Uh, Can I get a copy of that list? Sure. Okay. We will try to make the impact as as. Uh, uh, can't, make on, uh, can't make it. Can't make it painless. Possible. Well, well you know, Commissioner, it, this. It has to be done, though. Yes, it does. Uh, and I believe once we implement most of this, we'll find that we possibly can issue a few more passes in the parking deck than spaces allow because we do have not every county employee. I know they're wonderful people, but not every county employee comes to work every day. Uh, well, they have vacation. Right. And sick leave. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I believe we'll be able to issue possibly up to 110% on the passes, depending on uh, the average absenteeism. I don't have those facts, but you don't No, have what will happen will be first come, first serve. You drive through, you don't make it, you're walking, and you go down there. That's it. So you People you, come to work earlier. Oh, well, yeah. But, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, that's I, what's going to happen then. As long as, we got a, as long as we got a place for the overflow, and if they if they don't get here in time, they're just going to have to go down to Washington Avenue, and they're going to have to walk, right? Yes. OK, that makes Walking sense. Walking is healthy. But it's I don't good. I don't want to issue more than 100%. <laughs> well, you said 110%. I said we may be able to issue up to 110%. I want to wait and do the 100% first and see how that works. I, I know you want to, I don't want to, I don't want employees spending an hour driving around the parking deck and coming in to work late or getting back from lunch late because they said they couldn't find a parking spot. That'll happen and I, I want to preclude that from happening also. That's another issue that I get very well out of hand very quickly. I'm sure HR director will take care of that issue. <laughs> Whatever you do, please don't stop contacting the priest, even if you have to pester them. Because I remember when we just started the Justice Center, and I wanted to see it over here by where St. Mary's is. And everybody kept saying, they're not going to sell, they're not going to sell. But when I called them up, they were very favorable about selling because they want to move the school back there and get those kids away from crossing that alley. So anything is possible. So don't just uh, yeah, even assume that they won't allow us to park there. Keep no. pestering them. So what do you want us to do? What do you need? What do you need to do? What do I want? I want you to prove Motion my to plan. Approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. What do you want? He's been waiting. I'm waiting for it's someone funny. to add in the parking garage on this line here. Well, a new parking garage? Yeah, I'm trying to see where that would fit in. <laughs> I guess i got to wait a little bit longer. For well, that, I, I think so. Okay, I'll wait a little bit longer. So you're going to make a motion to approve it as presented? Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, the motion's going to have to include... Okay, I don't, I don't want, I find it hard to believe we have to make a motion. Commissioners, I, I really don't need a resolution by the board to implement yeah, this plan. I just need some agreement that you see that we're doing the right thing I mean, here. 
Shame right. on you for not is, supporting your well, no, I, is, I know, I just yeah, don't see why we need a resolution. No, make I just, a motion. Well, I'll I second it. I support my administrator on the parking. So make a motion to approve this plan. Uh, but I, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> commissioners, please, thank you. But it's not your turn. I, it's not your turn. We're talking, okay? You, you've got more air time than we have, so you can be quiet now, okay? Just be quiet for a moment. Are, are you, are the three of us agreement on this? Let me, are you agreeable? I'm, I you agree. Agreeable? Yes. Okay, then we are agreeable to the plan that Karen and, and Jim have put together. How's that? Okay, and, and afford me a little bit of that. That's all I need because that gives me a little flexibility. There. If I passed the resolution, I may be locked in. Exactly. So tight. I'd rather oh, just. I'm you got sorry. support. Um, I'm sorry. You got the support. I, 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 I very Shkuban. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I want to thank Ms. Davis for wrestling with this issue for the last few weeks with me. It hasn't been an easy task. If the Justice Center is only half as hot as this is, uh, we'll be fine. That's well, going to get a lot funner. So, I appreciate the work, though. This is a good job. All in the name of progress. And you'll get me that list, right? Okay, thanks. I think probably we'd all like a list, Karen. Uh, that, uh, I'm about finished. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Okay, this is County Prosecutor, Mr. Ennis. I do need to have an executive session regarding pending litigation with commissioners. Okay. Should Commission be brief. Sorry. Commissioner's report? Commissioner Massey? Oh, I was just going to tell you, I do have the Save Well number. That's the prescription uh, discount program. And uh, it also covers vision care, up to 20 to 60% savings on vision care. The telephone number is 1-877-728-3935. And I said that real slow in case somebody doesn't have a pencil. But you also need the source code number. You mean source code code? When you call that number, you have to give them a source code. Well, I don't know if it's on here. Oh, it's okay. It, it, the source Thank code you. is one two zero zero, and that has to be mentioned when they call the number. And that's about all I have today. Um, I just would like to tell you that I was pleased to attend a breakfast this morning in Wellington at the FAA chapter, and they are celebrating National FAA Week is this week. So the uh, FAA in Wellington, they have about 67 members. Their um, advisor is Patrick Noble, and I received this invitation from Alexandra Woods, who's the committee chair for FAA Week in Wellington. <coughs> Tomorrow they're going to have a parade. Tomorrow afternoon they're going to parade in tractors around the school and down the street. And Roxanne should know all about this, and around McCormick School and back down. So they're really, uh, and they were really, really interesting kids. It was nice to be there this morning. I was very well received, and I enjoyed that. Uh, tomorrow, the NRAC Committee, National Resource Assistance Council, will meet to grade the applications that we received for the Clean Ohio funds that are part of uh, District 9. That's uh, Lorraine, um, Huron, and Medina counties. And uh, there were about 13 applications that were taken out, five that were returned. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. And that's how I'm celebrating my birthday tomorrow with NRAC. And I just want to show you what my secretary gave me for my birthday tomorrow. Isn't oh, that neat? Uh, Betty Boop. Boop. It says the commish. And I want you to know that I think that she can keep her job. Just keep the gifts coming, Joyce. <laughs> That's, thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Um, uh, two days ago, I met with Tom Kelly at the Fairview uh, Manor uh, fire. Uh, SBA uh, Small Business Administration flew up from Atlanta, and the EMA from Ohio uh, districts came out and um, everything looked pretty good. The bottom line is we won't know probably till next Tuesday or the end of the week on whether or not we will get the classification that we need from the federal government. If we do get the classification from the federal government, uh, Governor's Taft uh, office will then participate also for those people that fall out of the federal government. Uh, the main thing that uh, Mr. Kelly has informed us again is that they do have a list of all the names and numbers so nobody will be missed. Uh, yes, uh, the people from the government, uh, from the federal and state, were very uh, impressed at how fast the community came together and, and provided the uh, necessary assistance to, for everybody there. So it was a good meeting, and we're hoping hopefully by the end of next week we'll have answers. And if we get the federal designation, then uh, the state of Ohio will step in. So it's going to be a good thing for the community. 
Um, I had something else, as I mentioned, your birthday. I didn't know whether or not you are going to mention that. So since you did all by yourself, uh, I want to say happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, David. I had to own up to it. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad I, I wasn't like that. <laughs> it comes with maturity. <laughs> oh, no, I'm still working on that. Um, okay, that's all I have. Okay, in our old business, we have a couple items. To approve and enter into agreement between the Board of Commissioners and K.E. McCartney and Associates for miscellaneous sanitary engineering services on an as-needed basis. Commissioners, uh, uh, Mr. Connie was unable to attend today's meeting. Uh, I had thought he would be here. I, I would ask that you put this for further hold until such time as he can be here. Okay. No problem with me. Well, if no one else has any questions, I talked with him yesterday. Are you, are you I was now? satisfied. Oh, satisfied? Satisfied? Okay, great. That's wonderful. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. <coughs> if, if, I think Ms. Facey, was, uh, you had the concerns, and, and I wasn't able to properly address those concerns. And if, they, if that's been alleviated, that would be great. Jerry, you had some concerns, too. Were they addressed in, in the contract? Um, Ken had mentioned that you went over it with him. Yes. Uh, Karen and I looked through it. The, there was a question, uh, the original one question that was raised um, was whether the, the bid had been properly broken up. It is, well, that's a different um, Oh, okay, I'm on the next one, okay. Is this for a one-year term, or is this forever? I think it's, oh, I don't uh, remember. This, wait, just, this is what, what I'm wondering is, if we approve an enter into a agreement, oh, okay. I'm wondering how, what I'm the, sorry, what I the term, because the, the term isn't in here. I mean, this is. Ms. Well, it's in the agreement, Madam, isn't it? Madam Clerk, you have the agreements there, don't you? That's, it seems like since we're voting on it. We, uh, there was some time ago that that was passed with right. the commissioners. Would John know? I think it was. Pardon me? Would John know? Would John know? Jerry, do you need a copy? No, no now I, I, I'm just sorry. I thought we were on the second one. Yes, I did talk with uh, Ken Carney, and there were some substantial <laughs> modifications made after our, uh, our original discussions, and, and they amended the agreement to uh, satisfy my question. But is it a, uh, is there a set term, or is this, are we locking in now? Or do I have to read you out? Do you know Roxanne, I think they were in a blue folder. It's, it's, yeah. it's an as needed. And it's still here. I think I the entire thing is an as needed basis. There, w there were some particular projects that we're committed to, but uh, as far as a continuing basis, it's pretty much an as needed. So that if we don't call them to do things, uh, then we don't use them. I don't want to interrupt. It says here in, in Mr. Uh, McCartney's letter. The per renewal period of this agreement is from February 1st, 2002 to December 31st, 2003. Looks like, sounds like about a little bit over a year and a half. Look at this. I, don't have a, I don't have a problem having a visit every year just to make sure everything's okay, but I want to make sure. Oh, great. We're not locking in. I think, Jerry, you have concern about $100,000. This agreement shall be remain in effect from first. Let's go till 2003. Is that what you said? Okay. Eighteen months. Mr. Moore? Aye. And also to award contract to Bay Mechanical and Electrical Corporation of Lorraine, Ohio, 
in the amount of $106,300 for the Crest Haven Wastewater Treatment Plant Project for contract number three, which is general and electrical. The engineer's estimate was $97,100, and the bid is within the 10% limit. The county engineer and Katie McCartney Associates have reviewed and recommends approval. The award is contingent upon the Ohio Public Works Commission approval request to proceed. Commissioners, if uh, you remember this issue, there was there was some questions by, by Mr. Baker uh, concerning this. Um, we have uh, researched the issue uh, uh, pursuant to his request and determined that uh, the matter was in compliance, but I, I believe Mr. Baker still has a concern and you would like to come forward and talk about that. My name is Brian Baker, I live at 578 North Main Amherst Tower. I guess my only concern is I understand that you can combine the bids. The only concern is it said they have to be bid separate, and when they're bid out separate, you have to put the numbers down. You can combine them after that matter. And I know I, I talked to you yesterday about it, Jim. There's many jobs out there that you'll see it. Somebody will take out a small portion, just bid it as it, then put the combination in. The revised code in 153, I gave it to you yesterday, it does say that any amount over $5,000 has to have a separate number. If they don't put the separate number in, they can't bid that part of the combination. And that, if I'm wrong in that, I apologize for taking your time, but I still think that that's how it is. There's been many jobs out there that have been turned down that way, and I do have some more information. I don't have it today, but I will get it to you from a place in Canton where I know it's been turned over for this. So, I mean, if you have to act on it, I understand it, but I think in the future, I would just ask you to consider this and look into that. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. I, obviously, we, we need to take the proper time to uh, ensure compliance with all uh, applicable regulations. Uh, Commissioners, I, I, we ended up referring this to uh, the prosecutor's office, and, and uh, uh, Jerry, you may want to speak to it a little bit. Well, we looked at this week. Um, uh, I have not seen the new materials. And I'll, that there are specific requirements that you bid this out, you break it down. Um, and if you're going to award parts, those certain parts of it, those certain parts do have to be broken down. If, if one person does the combination, uh, the only way that person is permitted to get the combination is if they are the lowest bid. You In can't- each part? No, if, well, that, I think that's what Brian, what you do is you look at all the separate parts and if there's any combination you can come up at all that comes out lower than this combined bid, then, then you have to take some other combination. But in this particular instance, this one combined bid is lower than any other combination, any way we can put it together, anyhow, this one comes out lower. And my review of that is that under that circumstance, it is acceptable to take it that way. I will the commission want to Jerry wait. just uh, one, one question for you I, I don't disagree with the combination what I'm saying is it says anything over five thousand dollars has to have a separate bid if it's in any a branch a branch is a craft so it's general or electrical so they have to show their single number of the electrical and the general that's what it says in there anything over five thousand dollars and anything over fifty thousand dollars has to have that well I, I'm not disagreeing that they take the combination they have to spell those out as a separate bid, is what I'm saying. And, and what I see is Bay Mechanical just put a combination number without spelling out the electrical and without spelling out the general. And, and, and if I'm wrong, I mean, you can correct me or we'll get together. But what I'm saying is they still have to put in there, it says in there, that they have to bid them out separate. They have to show the separate number in there for the branches that are shown, is all I'm asking, and that's what I question. I don't question the combination number. I agree with that. They still have to do them out and show that single because if they don't show out a single number, they just they just put the one number out there. That's not what the revised code says. And that was the question that I had. Brian, help me to understand this better. You're saying electric, uh, say electric, and um, what else do you want to say, for example? Well, it, it breaks it out in there. It says plumbing, gas fitting, okay. steam and hot water, and electrical. And what it says is right in, in the revised code that they, those have to be out anything over $5,000 has to be bid out separate. Okay. You can put a combined. I don't, I don't disagree After with that. After the separate bid. That's you correct. Put, you you have to show them. the separate numbers out, and that wasn't done, and that's the question that I had. And I don't disagree with the combination bid, because you can do that, sure. but you still have to, you have to break them out separate 
by the revised code. And if I'm wrong, Jerry, you can correct me, but I'm almost positive that's what it says in there. They have to show those numbers. They have to be a bit out. I know of two jobs that have been thrown out that way, and I know jobs that contractors that we represent have lost by the same thing that just happened here. They bid them all out as three separates, and then when they combine the numbers, you lose a job. I'm just saying they should put the numbers out there so that they're there. How do you lose the job after you combine them after well, they're well, bid I mean, separate? Well, I mean, what it is is we would be in a separate. I'm, the trade that I represent would be the electrical. We combined in with someone, and when they get down to combination, it came out to be a lower number. I don't disagree with that. That can be done, but you still have to show your separate number. Was just the a question that I had. And we need to get an answer before we do the Justice Center because that's going to be coming up again. We already do it on the Justice Center. You oh, have you single did? primes on electrical. Okay. You have single. You guys already do it in the county. I guess that was my question. Is oh, everything okay. is bid out of single primes? Okay. And I and that was my question. And pretty much anything in there, it covers who the entities are that do do that. Okay. And what's the issue if we're doing it? No, we're not doing it. What he's saying is that the engineer on this bid didn't do single bid. That's it, right? Okay, so that's the issue. Single, they did a single bid. They didn't break out their... They didn't break oh, out is that how they advertise it, as a single bid? It's, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's well, I'm just asking. I know, I'm just asking. I don't know how it was advertised. I oh, didn't okay. see it was advertised. Okay. And I think they said Mr. Carney was going to be here today. That's why it came. Jerry, are we in compliance? Well, I would rec... <laughs> I, I have not looked at that specific issue that uh, Mr. Baker is mentioning now. I would recommend we hold this another week. I'll take another look oh, at that okay. specific issue. How about you? Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, you're old business? None. No. New business? I have, I have none. none. I have none. I guess I could do this under the report, but I'll do it under new business. But I was at the uh, CCAO Taxation and Finance Committee meeting Friday. And they're talking about uh, the General Assem Assembly authorizing the counties to enact additional taxes. And there was quite a debate on that. Some commissioners are totally in disagreement with it. And I guess one of the issues is that if the counties have the authority to enact an additional sales and use tax, then the, the state will come back and um, give us less money on some of the mandated areas because now we have the authority to enact an additional tax. So they'll force us into enacting. So um, there was quite a debate on that. And then it, it also gave us some background. Like in uh, 1967, the General Assembly authorized counties to enact four permissive taxes for the county purposes. This uh, package <coughs> of taxes included the permissive sales and use tax, real estate transfer tax, motor vehicle license tax, and utility service tax. And that's quite a good package there. Since this time, the General Assembly has expanded the authority to levy the sales and use tax to 1.5%, has authorized additional piggyback license taxes, has authorized the enactment of a permissive lodging tax and has authorized permissive cigarette and alcohol beverage taxes uh, and limitation and limited circumstances. Talk about taxes. And then you wonder why people are discouraged when they hear we're putting a tax on the levy. <clears throat> That's all I have to report on that one. Commissioner Blair? I have none. I move we. Uh Waive the reading of the board correspondence. Second. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassin? Aye. Public comment? Anyone for public comment? <coughs> Elizabeth Remix, R U M I C S, Oberlin. I would assume that you all have considered this aspect in that great problem of parking, and parking is always a problem, of course, but I wonder if there is any way to utilize Lorain County Transit, perhaps with special rates, although, of course, the county is already doing a lot to uh, pay for the county transit, but as a great supporter of and user in the past of public transit, I do wonder if perhaps there might not be some people for whom this would not be inconvenient or too rigorous and where some special arrangement or other might be made it would help to publicize Lorraine County Transit needless to say and it might 
give you one or two or three more spaces. Thanks, Leslie. Anyone else? Or how do you just go on up? Robert Kish, Laria, Seven Seas. Justice Center parking. All the more proof of the old adage. Location, location, location. I told you so. <laughs> but you went ahead and did it anyway. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioner of Lorraine County. I like sunshine. I also like the sunshine law. I also like to thank the commissioners, and I don't know which matter how it came about, perhaps because of my speaking, but my neighbor got his dog back. Well, there was a web napping or an e-napping, I don't know, but my neighbor's dog is back home, and he said that the commissioner's got involved in his case. He doesn't understand how, I wonder. Anyhow, as I stated before, there are two ways to spread light. One is to be the candle, the other is to be the mirror that reflects it. I do not believe anyone, everyone knows they can attain a VHS copy of these meetings. It took me six months to get my first meeting, my first copy, because I tried and tried again. I was successful. The noncompliance of what I feel is the sunshine law has resulted in me waiting until now. I still haven't received the last tape of the December meet, the last December meeting that we've had. It wasn't available when I came in today. So there's been a break in the weather when I did get my copies. Now it looks like perhaps bad weather has returned. Anyhow, there is a darkness in this county, the darkest area being Pittsfield Township. Julie Fitzgerald, now a former Chronicle Telegram reporter, attended a Pittsfield Township meeting and she was told she could not report on a meeting as she did not reside there. She replied, sir, I will have you know I can report on Moscow if I choose to. She wrote her article. The last I heard of Julie, she was working for an Akron newspaper. I believe Pittsfield Township, one of the few townships that do not have weekly newspaper reports, even in their free local advertising papers. They are not covered, and yet, and yet, they receive a fax prior to commissioner's meetings, even though I have never seen the recipient present in this room. I have seen other township officials here, some several times. I believe if one township receives the fax on the agenda, then the others certainly are entitled to receive a copy also. If not, they are definitely being discriminated against. By the way, I still have not, re okay. <laughs> the last commissioner's meeting held, I forget the number in attendance, but today there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 12 people in attendance, which is an improvement. Remember, they who are not present, and this is a quote, they who are not present are wrong. So we need your presence at these meetings. <coughs> Anyhow, this is to be continued. Tune in next week. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Thanks Bob, for your uh, keen insight and editorial <laughs> comments. Um, again, a lot of people are do work, and, I, and out and about, the commissioners do hear about how many people do watch the video, and uh, that's another way to keep the, the eye on the dollar for us. Um, we do have to move into executive session, so I move to move into executive session. I'll second. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. I'm going to go lunch. Bobby, about 10.